this story is about Israelites possessing their promised land and once they inherited and possessed their promised land something happened God has commanded them to drive out all the nations that have occupied land of Canaan prior to them and children of Israel under leadership of Joshua have destroyed and drove out many nations because of the sins these nations had but the scripture says that they reached certain level in their occupation and possessing of this land that we read tonight they could not drive out certain nations and we can assume why because they were not strong enough the nations were stronger than them and so you can assume that they were weak that they could not drive out certain nations and sometimes we find ourselves as Christians facing certain things that we say we can't do it God says it belongs to you he says I can't do it I tried too many times Sometimes God says, you know, certain things is wrong, it's sin. And you say, I tried to quit, but I can't quit this because I am too weak against this issue. I want you to notice that God's word for weakness is disobedience. What we call weak, God calls disobedience. God didn't come to Israel and say, I understand you're weak and I understand Canaanites have chariots full of iron. I understand this is too hard. I understand this is too difficult. God did not say that. God said you're disobedient and um, it cuts me right in the core because sometimes I find myself fighting against certain issues where I can't overcome them what I beating the living lights out of it and trying to conquer that issue be it insecurity be it lust be it pride be it homosexuality be it smoking being drugs being pornography whatever be it you're just fighting against it even being sickness or casting out demons or doing something that God clearly stated in his word that this is what belongs to you and you tried once you tried twice you tried three times and you couldn't do it you saying, you know what God I can't do it and then we write it off saying you know what we're just too weak we just can't do it and God says it's disobedience how many times young people would date and before marriage you know they would slip into sexual immorality and then they will say oh it was just so hard we were just so weak no you were so disobedient replace so weak so hard to so disobedient <laughs> because see when you say so disobedient you gotta repent and when you repent God changes you but when you say so weak you're blaming God for making you like that don't blame God and when you repent of disobedience God becomes your strength let the weak say I am strong come on somebody amen we all have an inheritance from God Israelites had an inheritance from the Lord it was their promised land but they could not fully occupy it. They occupied partially, but they couldn't occupy it fully. Jesus Christ has died on the cross to give you and me an inheritance. Now inheritance, I'm not talking about an island somewhere in the ocean. I'm not talking about a big mansion in Hawaii. I'm not talking about a big car somewhere on a car lot. I'm not talking about a million dollars. I'm talking about an inheritance, salvation, inheritance, God's grace, inheritance, God's forgiveness, inheritance even by the stripes of Jesus Christ I am healed inheritance that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want he is my provider the inheritance where God gives me victory and I can be more than conqueror and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me no weapon formed against me can prosper it's all part of the inheritance that belongs to you and sometimes as Christians God gives us grace to conquer partially that inheritance and we get our forgiveness from our sin and we get removal of our condemnation and guilt and all the things with the past and we get saved our name is written in the Lamb's book of life and certain enemies are beaten and we have partial inheritance and then we try to get some more because we know it's promised we know it belongs to us but we try we try we try we try we try and then we realize that this is not as easy as the Bible says so we just quit that's exactly what Israelites did here they occupied their inheritance partially God has an inheritance for you and you have to understand each one of us in here today we are not including myself living to the full inheritance God has for you and me all of us those of you who have a car most of you only drive 70 60 55 or 30 miles per hour but your car can go a lot faster and same thing with us as Christians but see the problem is in our highway we have speed limits 
that reg regulates your driving that regulates and keeps you low make sure you don't drive pretty fast and I know it's for our safety but in the spiritual realm the enemy puts his speed limits where he wants to limit your speed he wants to limit your potential he wants to limit how far you go with Christ he wants to keep you just in forgiveness make sure you don't get anyone else except forgiveness and just salvation of your soul make sure you don't impact anybody else make sure God doesn't use your hands to heal the sick God doesn't use your mouth to cast out demons make sure you just stay within 30 miles per hour and the moment you try to go further think about going further try to go further he pulls you over and says bang bang hits you a few times and after that so you'll remember don't attempt anything don't attempt anything all this miracle stuff don't attempt it people will leave the church all this prophetic stuff don't attempt it you will be considered cuckoo all these things of believing God that God can break a curse in your family don't attempt it because the moment you stop praying the enemy will come pull you over and give you some spanking and he will attack you because he's not interested in you going over the limit he's not he likes to keep Christians partially inheriting the promised land but God wants us to inherit it fully 100% even if it's difficult even if I tried so many times even if other people have failed doing it at the same time we have to understand God has a promised land he always promises are for us they're not for African people they're not just for people in India they're not just for people in third world countries they're not just with people whose poverty rate goes through the roof they are for people of America of Canada Mexico Russia Asia Japan every single nation and every single tongue why because God is a God of all people say amen God has an inheritance for you and me and we have to possess it. I heard a story once, Charles Spurgeon, a famous preacher of a um, long time ago, he would visit this sick lady who was in the hospital and once he kept coming to her and she was dying in poor poverty. I mean, this lady had nothing to her name. Charles Spurgeon had to bring her food. She was so poor. And once he came to pray for her and just kind of, you know, last final hours of her life on this earth and he noticed a... a a picture frame on the wall and he came closer to the picture frame just out of curiosity because she didn't have many picture frames he looks on the picture frame on the wall and he sees a will for certain names of the properties in England that he was aware of the name of those properties they were very rich and wealthy neighborhoods that she had on her name a will passed down from previous generations and this lady is dying in poverty while a will a promise for her is hanging on the wall I believe how many times as Christians we would like to frame this in the walls of our life and at the same time live a life that's completely different. How many times God has so many promises that he's given to us and God did not give us a will so we can frame it into a picture frame but so we can possess our possession, confess our possession and possess our possession and live in it fully a hundred percent. Do not get discouraged when you get pulled over by a police patrol of the enemy that does not want you to break the limit, to break the limit, to break going over just possessing your partial inheritance that God has for you and God has for me. God has an inheritance for each one of us individually. God has an inheritance for each church. He has an inheritance for us and we can be satisfied reaching a partial salvation honestly is the greatest gift you can receive forgiveness of sin is the greatest gift you can receive but my friend there is more than that you just witness a lady whose eye one girl whose eye was completely blind it's part of the inheritance she didn't get it because she was holier than us she didn't get it because somehow she was better than us it just simply she tapped into the will that we usually put in a picture frame on the wall and she cashed it you saw another person who came and her husband died by hanging himself and she had two marriages and another person died and her three people died in her family same thing an inheritance prophet tb joshua who walks not just partially in that inheritance but he tries to possess more and more and more god has more for us let's not be people who settle for partial inheritance that god has for us what israelites did is they said we can't possess this land the enemy is too strong the enemy is too great and they said it with their mouth we cannot overcome our enemy we cannot drive them out let's not let our situation direct our confession let's not let our situation change our confession let's let God's word fill our confession because what you confess you will possess 
The scripture says we believe with our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and therefore we are saved. You know why you are saved? Because you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know why we are strong? Because we confess God as our strength. You know why we are weak? Because we confess our weakness and our struggles. Let the Bible says let the weak say I am strong. The scripture says, let the weak not focus on his weakness. Let the strong not focus on his strength. Let the poor not focus on his poverty. Let the rich not focus on his riches. Let the struggling not focus on his struggles. Let everyone focus on their God, who is their strength and who is their blessing. Somebody say amen. I want to encourage you today. When you are weak, God says you have to confess his strength. You don't let your situation determine your confession. You may say, Vlad, if I confess my, if I confess not my weakness when I am weak I am lying if I'm going around and saying I am rich when I'm broke like a joke I am lying no you're not lying you're just refusing to focus on your situation and you're focusing on your God if I walk around and I'm struggling and I confess that I'm victorious lad I'm being phony I'm being crazy you're not being crazy you're being a person who sees not only his struggle but who also sees his mighty God who's above and who's a lot bigger than the struggle and the issue that you and I face today don't let your situation determine your confession because your confession can change your situation but don't let your situation change your confession somebody say amen the scripture says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 God says to Joshua do not let this book of the law depart from where from what your mouth it did not say don't let this book depart from your eyes so you read it all the time it doesn't say don't let this book depart from your ears so you listen to it all the time. It doesn't even say don't let this book depart from your heart so you meditate in it all day and night. It says don't let it depart from your mouth means don't ever let this book depart from confession. It has to. See most of us we are happy reading it. We are happy listening to it. We are happy thinking about it but God says you have to go one step further. Let it be your confession let this book determine what you confess because most of us God knows we confess what we're going through we confess what we feel we confess what is happening to us we're confessing what we're seeing instead of what we are reading and what God is saying let God's word become what you confess somebody say amen let's not confess what you're going through because champions don't focus on what they're going through they're focused on what they're going to champions don't confess what they're going through and what they feel champions confess what they believe champions confess what they're going to I'm not saying being crazy I'm not talking about going around the house and saying you know all of these even if you do say it's better than saying something else we're saying to confess what God says to confess his word to confess his truth somebody say amen there's power in a confession and we have to confess the word of God in our life there are many areas of our life that we try certain things that we can't accomplish and when we can't accomplish them, sometimes we come to the conclusion, it's not the will of God for my life. We cannot do that. You have to try, 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 keep and die trying instead of settle for something that's not true. When disciples were in a storm with Jesus and the scripture says that Jesus went to sleep. It's interesting how Jesus was, had so much peace, he was able to sleep in the storm the disciples were dying in. You know, if you can't sleep in the storm, you can't stop it. And so Jesus is sleeping in the storm and disciples are having a hard time. They're dumping all the water out and they're like pushing each other saying we are dying and Jesus is sleeping. I mean like I don't know what he drank. I don't know how tired he was. I mean to sleep in that kind of a storm the disciples were kicking each other and saying we are dying. I mean that's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. So Jesus is sleeping and they're coming and they woke him up and the moment they woke Jesus up Jesus first of all spoke to them. He rebuked their unbelief and then he spoke to the storm. Now in John chapter 1 it says that Jesus Christ is the Word. The Word was first with God, the Word was God and the Word became flesh. Jesus Christ is that Word. When you and I face a storm in your life, see most of us we just talk to each other and we just say oh this is so bad we're gonna die man this is this is horrible our church is going down man. My health is just going worse, my family man, my finances man. I'm, I'm getting 27, 28 and nobody's even proposing, nobody's interested in me. Oh my goodness and so we just look at our storm and we begin to talk to storm but see what Jesus wants you to do is he wants you to get in your boat and wake up the Word. Because most of us have this word laying in our boat and it's asleep. Not dead, just asleep. And see, when you begin to wake up the word and you have a storm in your life, after that the word begins to first speak to you. And it begins to rebuke you. It begins to prune you. It begins to deal with you. It begins to, the word is not going to always slap you in the back and say, you're amazing, you're powerful. Sometimes saying, you know what, shut up. The word sometimes is saying, you know what, knock it off. 
The world sometimes will say, you know what, snap out, girl. The world sometimes will tell you, you know what, keep your, zip your lip, come on. The world sometimes will rebuke, not always the word is going to encourage. And those of us who look into the Bible to always tell you how wonderful, amazing you are. No, sometimes the Bible will tell you how messed up and how horrible you are and you need to repent. The word rebuked them. The word rebuked them, but after it rebuked them, it also rebuked the storm. This is where it gets good. See, God's word doesn't only have a power to rebuke you, it also has the power to rebuke the enemy. And when his word is in your mouth, it's the same thing that when it was in Jesus' mouth. And Jesus rebuked the enemy in the wilderness. And the scripture says the enemy left Jesus. See, there is power in the word of God. When you wake it up in your life, and instead of confessing what you're going through. See, Israelites could not conquer their enemies. So they start confessing that. And they said, we cannot conquer our enemies. But Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't say what you can't do. Miracles don't come in cans. Miracles come in cans. Miracles are in cans. The moment you say, I can't do it with Christ, you have a miracle. Come on, somebody. Amen. Wake up the word. The word will speak to you. And the word will speak to your storm. When you say you can't, when you pronounce a bad confession, when you live your life confessing only what we are going through, when our mouth is filled with what's around us, when we go and say, we can't see healings today. This person died out of cancer we prayed for. This person died out of arthritis we prayed for. Uh, we can't see God breaking through. Economic, economical situation is too difficult. Real estate is down. Businesses are down. We can't see the breakthrough. This person has lost his business, lost his home, lost his boat, lost his trailer, every single thing. The bank repossessed it. But the moment you start confessing your circumstances, what you are doing is you're putting a lid on your growth. You stop growing and you empower the enemy to get stronger. Let me give you an illustration. If you go to a gym and you pick up 50 pounds as a guy and you've never been to a gym before and you pick up 50 pounds, what's going to happen is this. Either you will drop those two 50 pounds or those 50 pounds will bring you to the bottom. After you picked up those 50 pounds and you realize this is too heavy, you can drop those 50 pounds and go home and say, you know what, this stuff is only for people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is not for me. I'm not meant to lift weights. I am horrible. I am miserable. I am weak. This is who I am, period. Or you can do second. When you do that and you say, I can't do it, you're putting a lid on your growth. You have to understand 50 pounds will not get heavier within a year, but you can get stronger. See, most of us, we say our problem is too difficult. Let me tell you something. Your problem is not getting heavier, but you can get stronger. The enemy is not getting bigger, but you can get stronger. And see, the moment Israelites said, we cannot possess our full inheritance, what they did is they said, we will stop trying, we will stop growing, and we will let the enemy get stronger. We will let the enemy acquire bigger and stronger and more powerful weapons while we're going to sit here believing we can't do it and we're putting a lid on the growth. Some things you can't overcome right now. That's why the Bible says you shall know the truth. The word know there is a process. Relationship. The truth is not a knowledge. The truth is not a subject, a topic. It's a person. Buddha said, I look for the truth. Muhammad said, I'm a prophet of the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. When you know the truth means when you develop a relationship, it takes time. Something happens, you will be free. Some freedoms come when we spray you with the anointing water. Some freedoms come, somebody prays for you. Some freedoms come, you come and repent of your sin and those shackles break. But some come when you begin to lift a little bit more weight, a little bit more weight. And then a year later, you pick those 50 pounds up and you say, you know what? I conquered you because you're not getting, getting heavier, but I'm getting stronger. Say amen. When we say we can't conquer it, we can't overcome it, we're putting a lid on our growth while we're empowering the enemy to get stronger. God wants us to grow. When you can't change your situation, don't let your situation stop you from growing. When God, when Abraham did not change his situation when he did not have a child, God changed Abraham's name and the Holy Spirit kind of placed it in my heart is that if you can't change your life at least change your name change your confession I may not change our church but I can change what comes out of my mouth you cannot maybe change your life but you can change what comes out of your mouth and the scripture does say let the weak say 
that's a, that's a scripture that means you have to start adjusting to what the bible you say lord but i don't feel that remember your feelings are like weather one day they're good another day they're bad one day they're up another day they're down you don't want to put your whole life in what you feel you want to put your whole life into something that never passes the weather will pass the empires will pass nations will pass countries will pass this word will never pass away somebody say amen and this will remain your situation is not eternal the moment you let your situation dictate your confession you know what you're doing you're telling your situation is permanent my situation is eternal my marriage will never change my health will never change I've went to so many doctors I went to so many prayer lines it will never change let me tell you what will never change God your situation can something that will never change that is the Word of God everything else is subject to change as long as you are on this earth you're breathing electrified air of hope every single day something can change every single day you're living every step you're taking every breath you're taking you are living a life where everything around you can change you can be on the top everything can change you can be on the bottom everything can change the only thing that cannot change is the Word of God and the nature of God he will always remain the same so I refuse to confess my situation I refuse to confess what I'm going through why because it's subject to change it may have not changed been changed last 20 years Abraham waited for a child for a long time but every day Abraham got up and he says Sarah mother of many nations no kids in the house no little bambinos running in the house but his confession did not change the situation never changed his confession and one day his confession changed his situation there's power in God's Word it never changes you guys and the Word of God says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today that will never change the Word of God says that healings and deliverance is not done and gone away with the days of Apostle and that will never change the Word of God says those who believe in me shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover speak to the demon cast out demons that they shall leap the Word of God doesn't change you may lay your hands upon the sick and they die but God's Word still stands true the circumstances that you and I face today they're not subject to change because they are not God they're not powerful the only thing that will never change is the Word of God that's why don't let it leave your mouth confess it you may look weird Abraham looked weird for a while until Sarah had a baby a lot of people looked weird for a while that stood on the Word of God they were mocked ashamed people put their big fingers at them but when the Word of God brought the results those people were in glory the Word of God will never put you to shame people died for the Word of God my great-grandpa sat in jail for many years for this book not so that I could just read it but so that I could live it and so this will become my confession and today let's stand on this word and let this word dictate your situation don't quit don't give up you know I shared the story on Sunday night is that you know they put two frogs one young frog and one big frog in the bucket of uh, cream and two frogs were put in the bucket of cream and you know both of the frogs are start, started to they couldn't reach the bottom so they started to try to get out from the bucket and they started you know, paddling and going all around the problem is the sides of the bucket were slippery and, and they were they couldn't get any um, how, how you call the uh, grip they couldn't get any grip and so one frog just told the other frog we can't do this this is hopeless situation nobody's gonna rescue us I quit and one frog just died and went to the bottom the other frog was a lot smaller and the other frog said okay I have one choice I can die or I can keep trying I'll rather die trying instead of just die giving up the other frog kept 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 pedaling until its little legs got so weak she couldn't feel them no more and she starts realizing instead of the cream now it's got thicker and she kept doing it kept doing it I mean she was already on the edge of quitting but she said I'll rather die quitting I'd rather die trying instead of die quitting because the other one died quitting so I'll rather die trying kept trying kept trying until that cream churned into butter and the frog came out of the jumped out of the bucket and everything was saved same thing with your life many people quit because it gets too hard we can be the people who can keep pedaling keep trying keep knocking keep seeking keep praying keep fighting keep growing and one day this cream is going to be turned into a butter it happened for Abraham it can happen to you it happened to other people and it can happen to you say amen